Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I am Juliana Duro of the Juliana Duro Foundation coming your way again today. I bring you greetings in every geographical area you find yourself. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever remain with you in the name of Jesus. Amen. So guys, today I bring you this video by our renowned Apostle Joshua Selman, and it is titled The Mystery of Destiny Helpers. Hmm. I had a different view of Destiny Helpers until I watched this powerful message. So I want you to sit down, I want you to relax and go on this journey. Meditate on what he's saying because you will surely be blessed by it. I leave you now to watch this video and I will see you later. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Let's look at, oh dear. The second kingdom secret that I want to teach quickly, if we stop here, that's, that's all right. Please do not forget this one. In fact, let's, can we pray in tongues for one minute before I start teaching this? Hallelujah. Second Samuel chapter 9. I call it the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. Please write it down. We live in a world of men. Please understand. The earth, the heavens, even the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord. But the earth has he given to the sons of men. The cosmos is a domain that is controlled and managed by man if you know god alone you will do well but you will not succeed in the cosmos you need to know both god and man please listen very carefully hmm. most believers say it doesn't matter it matters in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters one king loves a woman and she becomes queen the same king hates a woman and she ceases to be queen please do not say it does not matter the gatekeepers in this realm are men and if you do not understand the irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers connecting every man from where you are to where you need to be is the ministry of a destiny helper let's hurry up second samuel chapter 9 please from verse 1 please look up let me do the reading and david said is there any that is left of the house of saul that i may show him kindness for jonathan's sake we're reading the first 11 verses too and there was in the house of saul a servant whose name was ziba and when they had called him unto david the king said unto him art thou ziba and he said thy servant is he three and the king said this and that and that and that and then let's go to okay hold on please go to verse three again he said and Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan had yet a son, which is what? Incapacitated. Someone is about to be lifted who does not have the ability in himself. Four. And the king said unto him, where is he? And Ziba said, behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodeba. And the and king david sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of amiel from lodeba now when mephibosheth the son of jonathan the son of saul was come unto david he fell on his face and did reverence and david said mephibosheth and he answered behold your servant be patient with the reading david said unto him fear not for i will surely what show thee kindness for jonathan thy father's sake and i will restore this is you see that now 
I will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table. How long? When it happens only once, it's not favor. It's breakthrough. Favor must be consistent. Continually. Read on. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? He would have said, You are speaking negatively. Get out of my palace. But when God plants a man's heart to be connected towards you, there is nothing the devil can do about it. Next verse. And the king called Ziba, Saul's servant, and said unto him, I have given unto thy master's son all that pertained to Saul and to his house. Thou therefore, now look up please, and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him. Look, look at this kind of thing. You sent me, I obeyed you, and now you are saying the man you sent me to bring. I and my sons will till the land for him, and thou shalt bring in the first fr the fruits that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Joshua Selman, thy master's son shall eat all way at my table. Now watch this. The Bible ends this with a very terrible information that this Ziba had 15 sons and 20 servants. So the king looks at a man with 15 sons, 20 servants, and says, leave all of them. Go to Lodeba. Go and look for a man crippled who has admitted he was a living dog. Bring him and he will eat at my table while you farm for him. Hmm. The irrefutable ministry of destiny helpers. In a moment, a man's life is changed because a man... Loved. See, the Bible says, and Jesus, Luke chapter 2, I think, and verse 52. And Jesus grew in wisdom, listen carefully, in stature and in favor with God and when you have favor with god you will know him you will have encounters but you will be broke you will fail you will suffer you need favor with men it's true please write this down destiny helpers are people equipped empowered ordained and assigned by god to help you fulfill your destiny. They are not people who just come. They are ordained. They are assigned. They are empowered by God. To help you fulfill your destiny. And also to take you to the next level of your life. Let's hurry up. You can get the tapes. It is God that blesses. But you would have heard me say it again and again. That all blessings come from God. Through men. To men nothing comes from God directly to men it comes from God through men to men please say it one more time everybody from God through men to men your promotion from God through men to men your property from God through men to men your miracle from God through men to men if God says yes and the middle man says no the answer is no I wish I had time. Let's do a little Bible study. The Bible tells us, I would always want to use this scripture. Did you know that David in the wilderness, already God had rejected Saul as king. We're Bible people. Is that true? And now David was in the wilderness having visions of himself as the next king. And between God and David was a man called Samuel. God said yes. Samuel said no. David remained in the wilderness. David's life was being delayed and almost wasted in the wilderness because a man disagreed with God. And you thought that God would just bypass him and say, I am God. David, I anoint you. God had to come and plead with Samuel and say, how long will you weep? Seeing that I have rejected Saul as king. God himself, not bypassing men. This is the world of men. Believers, please hear me. Our advantage is not just our spiritual connection, but our understanding that when God wants to lift you, he will connect you to destiny helpers. 
Hallelujah. There are four dimensions or four kinds of destiny helpers. Let me run them very quickly in two or three minutes. Number one. The first dimension of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Divine connectors. Second Kings chapter 5. There's no need turning there. I'll just tell you the story. Remember the story of Naaman? The Bible says Naaman was the captain of the Syrian army. The Bible says he was a valiant man in war. But the Bible says he was leprous. Are we together now? And then the Bible says one time they captured a slave girl. And the little maid looked at him and said, Oh, that my servant, you know, that the king, that Naaman would go to meet a prophet and etc., etc. He argued here and there, but eventually he went to meet Elisha. And the Bible says when he came to meet Elisha, Elisha did not even go out to salute him. He told him, okay, go to the Jordan, bath seven times, you will be cleansed. And the man got angry. He said, I mean, uh, with my pedigree, this man did not even come out to acknowledge me and so on and so forth. And it was the little girl that also advised him. Divine connectors don't have what it takes to bless you, but they can link you with who has what it takes. Now, listen very carefully. These are the systems of dominion in the kingdom. They may not have a job, but he may be at the park holding a flyer that doesn't make sense. Walk in Canada and he's waving it. He's a bus conductor and you are laughing at him, yet you do not know that the vision you saw, that's how it will come to pass. You will collect that little thing and look at it and see a number and call jokingly and that becomes the next level of your life. It takes discernment to identify divine connectors because they come in fashions that are not receivable. You will need discernment. A destiny connector can be your little child. He talks nonsense every day except that that day the spirit of the Lord is upon him. Mommy, why don't we pray in this house? And you think he's just talking as a little child. And it's in that prayer you have the vision that will become a great business. You need discernment. Divine connectors. Many of us pass them every day on the streets of Lagos. The Bible says to learn from the ant. The Bible says to honor all men. Do you know why? Because the list of people can still be used by God. If God used a donkey, he can use a bus conductor. God can use the person plating you. And while they are gisting in the salon and you are listening, they will communicate one information that fills the gap you have been looking for. Sustain discernment believers. Divine connectors. Number two, very quickly. The second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence. These are gatekeepers. They have what it takes to bless you. They have the resources, the track record, and the credibility. No man thrives just like that. There are times that you have the skill and the gift, but you do not have access to the gate. You will need someone who is already at the gate to recommend you. Their voices, their track record, their credibility can speak for you and they can lift you overnight. These are men who can endorse you. One speaking over your life from them, there are people in Lagos, one signature can give you and your siblings a job. It's true. It's not an issue of a prayer point. The answer is with them. It is within their power. Sometimes believers say, it doesn't matter, God. It's only you I seek. You are right, but you are wrong. You are very wrong. And, and sometimes if you don't understand this, I tell you since, listen, unbelievers know this. It's an advantage. They do not trivialize yes. men of influence, men of influence, men of influence. Many times we insult rich people, we insult blessed people, we, we neglect people's track records because we cannot see what happened. When they are in the cave of Adulam, you don't see it. You only see the manifestation. And you can see a blessed man and say, what is there? It was his father, not a rich man. If my father too was a rich man. And you see, the moment you dishonor men, you close the door for access. It's true. Isn't it amazing that in many territories, it's foreigners that come and eat of the blessings in the land. 
because the people there trivialize the nobles. I never see men of influence and pretend they are not there. I honor them vocally, unashamedly. I'm friends to politicians. I'm friends to men of... I'm friends with people in the military. I don't fight them. I don't curse them. They need me, but I need them. There's, there's nothing to lie about. We live in a wicked world. <laughs> yes, sir. Are we together? The body of Jesus is hanging on the cross, pastor. No prayer warrior could bring that body down. It took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea to bring the body down. Please do not reject influence. Joseph is dying with his dream in the prison. Pharaoh is there with one decree that can set him to be the prime minister of Egypt. But the middleman forgot. The middleman did what? Forgot. And then when God was ready to leave Joseph, he gave a dream that no astrologer could interpret. And when, can, can, look at this. Do you know that there are certain levels of influence if you don't rise to God cannot use you in certain ways? Because showing you the vision is useless. You don't have the influence to do anything about it. Listen, there were covenant people in Egypt Yet God could not come and give them the dream of the famine coming because they didn't have the capacity to do anything about it. So he came to the Pharaoh himself. And when the Pharaoh had, if Pharaoh, if the Israelites were disturbed about the dream, would anything be done? But when the Pharaoh is disturbed, he can shake his government. And the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. Not God sent for Joseph, the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon please understand this success system it is a secret in the kingdom this is what makes people to rise miraculously one endorsement please help this person sign this and that and the person looks at it and looks at you and say whose son are you you say well that's not the issue look focus on what i brought <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching this video from Apostle Joshua Selman. I hope it blessed your life. And thank you for your support. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't done so. And may the peace of our Lord God Jesus Christ dwell with you forever and ever. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.